This video corresponds with section 4, chapter 2 in our Holt Geometry book. This topic is biconditional statement. Now a valid biconditional statement can be formed only if a given conditional and its converse are both true. Here we have a true conditional. If a shape is a triangle, then it has exactly three sides. True. Its converse also is true. If a shape has exactly three sides, then it is a triangle. Let's review the notation of the original conditional and the converse, which is the exchange of the hypothesis and conclusion. Now, a biconditional introduces a new format and a new phrase, if and only if. So we no longer start with if the hypothesis, then the conclusion. What we now is, we just state the hypothesis, a shape is a triangle, if and only if it has exactly three sides. This phrase right here is your indication that we are working with a biconditional. And this biconditional is true only if the original conditional and converse are true. There is also a new notation you might see in some textbooks. IFF stands for if and only if. The notation is a double arrow. This notation implies P if and only if Q. You will see some problems in the text, maybe on a quiz or a test, that from a given biconditional, you'll be asked to create a conditional and its converse. So forming the conditional and its converse from a biconditional, let's read our biconditional. A square has an area of 25 square units if and only if it has a side length of 5 units. Our conditional would be to take the hypothesis and conclusion and form an if-then statement. If a square has an area of 25 square units, then it has a side length of 5 units. The converse we would simply exchange or switch the hypothesis and conclusion. So our converse reads, if a square has a side length of 5 units, then it, then it has an area of 25 square units. So hopefully this is pretty simple and straightforward. Where we can run into some confusion or difficulty is when we have to determine the truth value of a biconditional. So when determining whether or not a biconditional statement is true, follow these steps. Create the conditional and its converse. Determine the truth value of each. If both the conditional and its converse are true, then the biconditional is also true. And remember, what we're doing at this point to prove a statement false is by a counterexample. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing.